What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Vincent. Today we are back with another reaction. Today we're going to I investigated the murder capital of America. Now before I clicked on this video, I asked myself a couple of questions. Number one, what is the murder capital of America? And number two, why did he investigate the murder capital of America? There's no way I'm investigating anything with murder in the title. Bro. I'm not dumb. Are you dumb? You know what I'm saying? He's crazy. He didn't lost his rabbit mind. Murder capital? Man, get up out of here. And when I clicked on the video, my first question had been answered. New Orleans, the murder capital? No, I don't think so. I'm tired of these dirty cities being misconstrued as dangerous. The only danger you face there is a disease. Some rats and some roaches. You know what I'm saying? It's dirty, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going there, bro. I've been there, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know this. I may just be, be biased and getting flashbacks and stuff. But I went to school in New Orleans my freshman year in college. No, no. It wasn't dangerous, it was dirty. The only thing you face is potholes, and ah, bah, it's dangerous for your car. You know what I'm saying? This potholes was deep. My car had been through so much. Busted out my windows and stuff, man. Maybe I wasn't in the right part of New Orleans. I know New Orleans get down, but I wasn't in that part, clearly. But I was in the dirty part. So we finna get to this video and see the murder capital and why this dude investigated it. So let's get into it, let's go. This is New Orleans, the murder capital of America. What's the biggest problem out here in New Orleans? It's dirty. <laughs> Yeah. Like me walking on eggshells, it's that freaking scary. Wait, what did he say? Did y'all hear that? Alright, we're gonna let it slide. Always. Been shot eight times? Twice in both of my arm, twice in both of my leg, one in my chest, you know what I mean? Yeah, all right, man. New Orleans now holds the record as the murder yeah. capital of the nation. But why is everyone killing each other? And what can be done to fix it? I met up with a local rapper, Noon Orleans, to find out. I mean, anywhere in New Orleans is the jungle. It happens anywhere in New Orleans. Kidnapping, call jacking. All of the above. If I were to leave my car parked out here with the keys in it, it wouldn't be out here for an hour. Really? I guarantee you that. And 10 minutes in, we stumbled upon a murder scene where someone was killed just last night. How long have you been out here in New Orleans? Oh, man. Somebody just got killed around the corner. Oh, you said someone just got killed right around the corner. That's what you just said. That man's just murdered dirty. Right here? Yeah, I don't know what specific spot, but when I came through, I saw all the police calls from like right there. Did you see a murder scene out here? I did see the police out here. I didn't see if anything happened. Okay. Bro. How is it living out here? It's not bad. Okay. When you go for a walk at night, you looking behind your shoulder or what? I don't usually walk at night though. Has New Orleans gotten more dangerous over the years? Yeah, very dangerous. It's wicked in this street, bro. What do you mean by that? Hey, you gotta keep a pole. You know it's the murder capital of America? You're right. Check the news. You can oh, see. I see the news. Yeah. We be strapped out here? Y'all not strapped? Did you see anyone get killed out here? Yeah, I've seen that growing up all my life. I probably seen my first shooting when I was maybe like five or six. Five or six? Street, no, this around. is crazy, bro. This is crazy. You got to dodge bullets and hurricanes. Wow. Man, I'm not living there, bro. I, can't, I couldn't believe I survived that. You know what I'm saying? I was down there for a year. Bullets and hurricanes. I survived the hurricane. Good thing I didn't have to survive no bullets. I called her to my mama house, seen her. She got out work, and I seen a dude. He just put out a gun and told him, like, bitch. Where my $20 at? He shot at him over $20. Scary out here. Scary out here? Yeah, it's hard and scary. It's what do you hard. mean by that? You never know when you're going to get mugged. You never know when you're going to get jacked. I mean, it's like we walking on eggshells. It's that freaking scary. You yeah. scared to come out your door. I mean, it's This just is scary. dirty. I'm going to do things. All right. The crazy part is a lot of these cycles stem from the 90s and shit, bro. A lot of these kids don't know why they fight. But back then, even if they was killers, they had morals. They had principles. You know what I'm saying? Nobody didn't kill children. They'll call and tell you, we about to come around there for you put the kids and the ladies inside put the women inside yeah. you know what i'm saying we coming for you me and you we can meet in the middle of the street be lucky to graduate for real. a lot of people from when i was in middle school they not here with me today feel me that's what another thing i learned a lot of the kids that a be big kid school, they, they could die too yeah. it could be anybody for real. It, you don't gotta just be in no streets game on um, bro the first time somebody pulled a gun on me i was nine years old bro and it wasn't even a killer it was the police so it's like from those type of experience you learn how to approach life from staring on the barrel of his gun you feel what i'm saying we just playing basketball my brother-in-law bro yeah long live joshua adams he was killed by the police department and he wasn't doing nothing my sister was giving birth to his son you dig yeah. he never got to meet his son he left the hospital to go get my sister slippers you feel what i'm saying while she was delivering their baby didn't make it back to the hospital to see his son get born Mm. You feel me? They killed me. They left me for dead, but why the f would you doubt me? I come from public housing, paid mama bills as a child, never knew shit 
by the line once this ain't for fortune and fame this from the torch and pain before this mic made me sane i wrote this all on my brain some of my bitches just change yo they gonna pack up your funeral that's why i ride with the glock young niggas dying from cops put all my faith in the lord because you could die with a cop that was crazy. why time he looked scared like a whole social commentary in that rap if it don't come from the heart it ain't new in orleans whoa i then learned why new orleans got into rapping in the first place and how crime and violence has impacted him i learned how to write raps because my pops was incarcerated my entire life bro, up until i graduated high school and i had to learn how to write letters to him that's how we communicated year and a half ago that started like a, a series of funerals for me i went to over 10 funerals Dang. Some, some of the closest people that i love we sweep shit under the rug take it on our chin and go that we numb the violence you know you got a lot like that fentanyl shit. i lost like three or four friends from fentanyl overdoses this year. Crime, violence, gangs, and drug addiction seem to be baked into the culture here. And so we headed to the infamous Chef Street, known for prostitution and showing the lengths people go to make money out of it. apparently where a lot of prostitution goes down, women are selling their bodies on the streets. But a lot of them do have like pimps and shit. Yeah, dangerous out there. And it's protected. They, they I got one down here. Those. Actually? That's a fact, bro. Nine times out of 10, they do have somebody with them. They protected by somebody in New Orleans. Females not just gonna be on a, nowhere by these Show. That chick right there, found one. Uh -huh. What are you doing out here today? You working out here? I mean, I got niggas, yeah. What does I that mean? I wouldn't say, I'm, the, I'm like, I wouldn't call me a hoe. See, you wouldn't either. No, I'm not calling you a hoe. Yeah, 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 no. yeah, I know I got hella niggas and stuff, but um, yeah, I just got niggas. I got a lot of niggas. She just that. described it. Ask me my body count. No, I'm not asking. What? what? That should be. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? Hey. You live how you want to live, you know what I'm saying? This is dirty, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going right off the back, this is dirty. She don't look clean. I just want to say that. Nah, man, I'm sorry if you're from New Orleans, man. I'm, you know, hey, I was out there too. It was dirty. I'm just, I'm just keeping it facts. <laughs> these are my classmates. Like, okay. these are people I went to school with. So you've been, um, you've been them for that long? Is that what's going on? I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been since I've been like 15. Cause no, I'm really not a hoe. I'm really like a wife type, really like. No. I'm like, I got, I got. You know, a hood marriage. I got one in jail, and I got my older nigga always. He really my baby daddy. Well, any last words about New Orleans? She got kids. I mean, the food always good, dick good always. Everything I hear you the best for real. This street right now known for like prostitution. Certain sections of it. Yeah. They try to run them off, but they come back. What's the biggest problem out here in New Orleans from your perspective? Uh, I don't know if I'd want to say. What do you mean? The uh. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he laughing? Oh, Tommy, that's not funny. He... <laughs> now you gotta fight me, Tommy. Yeah, bro, bro, set it up. I'll take y'all two on one. Bring the old man, too. I'm gonna beat him. What do you mean by that? They're ignorant and don't give a fuck. They want everything for free. Is there conflict between blacks and Nah, that's there? racist. All the time. That's they racist. They want everything for free because their great-great-grandfather was a slave. You know, if you give them an inch, they want a mile. Do you think people This dude was you? racist. Yes. <laughs> what can you do about it? Uh, I wouldn't want to say. What would you say? No, I wouldn't. I can't say <laughs> You've already said so much. Just, just be honest with me. I said, what's the biggest problem out here? He said, N-word. Oh, oh like, Okay. I'm glad I didn't come over there. Yeah, it might have been some trouble, right? Yeah, I'm glad I ain't come I was, over there. I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, damn. Yeah, he, you laughed! Yeah. Yeah. He gonna get himself up. From the outside looking in, it was easy to judge these working girls. But New Orleans emphasized that people out here were doing anything to survive. It's, it's mandatory that you hustle in the city of New Orleans. Are you not gonna survive? There's no resources. There's nobody coming to save you. So, I'm 18 years old. I need a job. What am I doing? Are you robbing somebody? Okay, it's sad to see. Yeah, as kids sad. making bad decisions, yeah. bro, I wouldn't consider none of them as being evil, but you know, the government, society, whoever, the, the, the judicial system, they'll paint you as that as a child. But for the majority, man, all these kids really needed somebody to talk to. If I pissed off the wrong person out here on the road, what are the chances they're strapped and they'd be willing to shoot me? It's over a 75% chance that they're strapped. I mean, 
I'm gonna shoot you out here. As we drove through New Orleans, I noticed a lot of these buildings I've seen all them tents and stuff. Destroyed. That's life in New Orleans right there. Apparently, this was the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina that hit New Orleans in 2005, destroying homes, Katrina. businesses, the city, and countless lives. I thought it was Ida. And how the trauma from Katrina impacted and developed the next generation of criminals who grew up in these shelters and experienced it all as kids. We lived in shelters and experienced homelessness at a different level than any other American. I was sleeping in abandoned houses myself. They ain't really had nowhere to sleep. It was getting where you fit in for hotel rooms. We got a lot of these rundown buildings on this side of the city. We're in the east right now. So they grew up thinking they was at war. When they woke up living in them shelters and shit like that, people got guns pointed at them. They just trying to go use the restroom. I'm talking about little girls have to take a shower in the same place as a grown man have to take a shower, not knowing if he a pedophile or his background or anything. Sure. Man, that's that's scary. Growing up in them type of conditions will, will scar you mentally. It's more than PTSD. It's like it's everything. We had to learn how to live again. Your whole life just wiped away in a matter of a moment. It was one of the worst experiences ever. Yeah. You dig? Seeing dead people, not knowing where your family was at the time. Has New Orleans recovered from that since? No, we recovering, but we haven't fully recovered. Following Katrina, many people are trying to recover and rebuild their they city. They got hit again. Starting their own businesses, when I was out there, turning their culture you know and saying? history. It was Katrina before I was out there. And when I got out there, another one of my first week down there, it was Ida. They talking about category two. That boy jumped to a category five. I said, I'm gone. Oh! So on the first plane up out of there, they canceled my flight. I'll say, okay, say less, I'll drive. <laughs> Got up out of there. It took me 18 hours to get to Houston, which was six hours away. Make that make sense. Like, come on now. Into a positive opportunity. I met up with the owner of Chicken and Watermelon. What did he say? <laughs> entrepreneurship is for the future of New Orleans. The Chicken and Watermelon is crazy. Yeah, Chicken and Watermelon. And where did the name come from? It's, it's kind of funny. I'm gonna say it like this. Back in the day, they raised chickens, they sold watermelons. Yeah. Oh. They just put a bad connotation on it to make it seem like it's a bad thing, but this, you know, this is how you get wealth. How important is entrepreneurship and business ownership for the youth out here? Man, if you really want to be successful in life, start your own business. The education is dumbed down, the charter schools, they dumbed down, they ain't trying to teach the kids nothing. And if you talk to the kids, they slow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to inspire the kids. DRF. You school, you still take that, that hustle mentality and changing something else and learn as you go. There's all kinds of ways to hustle, man. You gotta find something to sell, not drugs. I love how he's turning a negative stereotype into a positive business opportunity. Yeah, What's your name, man? Chicken and watermelon. Josh, my name's Tyler. This is the barber shop. How long you had this place? Going on, what, four years now. How important is it having a hustle out here in New Orleans? Very important. Yeah. If you look at the city right now, only certain parts of the city is built back post Katrina, right? You will be seeing that, okay, there's not really much for a lot of New Orleanians to do because the city is lacking resources. L look at the record labels. We haven't got no record labels in New Orleans. Think about it, kids just won't have fun. I think it starts with us teaching the kids and like fighting for the future of the kids. That makes sense. It was obvious that the hope to break the cycle of violence was in the next generation. The future, kids, right. With their idols being drill rappers talking about gang violence and murdering each other, it was clear it impacted the culture and mindset of the youth from birth, leading to kids wanting to emulate their favorite rapper, Is that pursuing a gun? the life of a gangster rapper, shooting up their ops, and getting shot themselves. We met up with an up and coming rapper who wanted to emphasize. Ooh, where's his parents? Oh my god! Is that his daddy behind him? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, come on. This is this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. This little boy has a gun and money. He ain't got no job. He ain't selling no drugs. Whose money is he holding? He is not dripped out. He's 500 pounds. He's fat. No, I, no, I'm baking him now. And I'm baking his daddy too. His daddy fat. That little Nike tech he got on. Come on now. Shooting up their odds Look at this. and getting shot themselves. We met up with an up and coming rapper who wanted to emphasize that the gang life is no joke. What's your name? Three. Are you gonna spit some bars for his us? His name is yeah, Three. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. The stage is yours, man. Bo, my trap go crazy. Your shit moving and nigga, you lazy. I run it up to my mama, I made it. Try to take something you bring on the pavement. Niggas be bitches, they don't want to smoke. Try to take something that glitter I told. Trying to control my ain't a remote. I was down on my dick, I was crying for hope. Bells and bells and bells and bells. I run it up trying to get to the riches. I'm in my bag and they deep in their feelings. I ain't trying to talk, let niggas just listen. Slide on these block, niggas better be cool. I just want f I ain't trying to be rude. Head shop, you know where I'm at, no leg shop, ain't for the neck. And everything out there here. You boys can freestyle. This is all your life story coming in the That was not off the head, he wrote that. How many times you got hit, bro? Eight times. No twice in my bro. twice in both of my own, twice in both of my legs. Dang. One in my chest, you know what I mean? You been shot eight times? Yeah. You're that 50 cent. Thank God you're alive. Who, who shot you? I don't know. Is it that dangerous out here? Yeah. I didn't even give a f they just shooting up here. Yeah, just wrong place, wrong time, yeah. bro. How close this was to your heart? 
two, three inches, you hear me? Dang! That's about two, three inches. Okay, you have a kid? I got three. You got three? Yeah. They inspire you to keep going and just keep yeah. fighting for this dream? Most definitely. I got a little girl on the way, you hear me? Do you think the music impacts the next generation of he kids? He can't be more than 18, bro. That's not good. That's not good, bro. That's not good, bro. He does not need four kids. You know what I'm saying? That's not okay. Not okay. Four kids, you getting shot still. I'm not having, if, if it's bullets coming at me, I'm not having kids. That's not smart. Yeah, yeah, most depth, most depth. That that ties into what I be telling my little Bruh. boys. Like, y'all don't got to do this because y'all see another nigga doing that shit, you hear me? Yeah. You hear me say they watch a music video, everybody in a music video throwing Dracos and Glocks and switches in their camera and shit. When they grow up, they gonna feel the need to like, when I make me a music video, finally make me a music video, you hear me? I gotta give me a Draco, I gotta give me a Glock or a Switch and all that. No, you don't need that shit, bro. To all the young boys, y'all ain't gotta do that shit. Nine to five, just as good as hustling. Sliding on the clock, just as good as sliding on a block, brother. No cap. <laughs> Not everyone is just like much hair, and a lot of people die due to gun violence. With murders happening every day, countless kids are left without strong parental figures, get raised by the streets, live a life of crime, have a few kids, get locked up, and the cycle of violence and crime continues. Yeah, you gotta break them, them curses, man. It be like generational curses that we still be carrying on, family fighting, and people not speaking to each other. The kids are the future. It starts with teaching them, taking them now and molding them and giving them opportunities that we never had because it's way easier than it was back then. We didn't have the resources, you know? So Noon took us to a local middle school that his buddy taught at. That's goal was to give these kids a safe place to learn and build skills for the future without having to turn to the streets to make money. If this school look nice. Fill these kids time with something positive, then they don't have time to do anything negative. The more mm. knowledge these kids have, the more power they have. They don't realize how great they can truly be. Um, we have music, art, we have culinary. If I know my kid is in my band room playing the horn, I know they're not in somebody's car stealing their stuff. You just wanna be producers? I said music big down there. So I get them to send it to me and I listen, and I'd be like, man, it's crazy how creative they is. Like they mind, so I try to give them in that class the space to really just open up creatively and just yeah. let they, you know, let everything flow. You feel like this is like a home away from home? Yeah, because it got me out a lot of stuff. The reason why this band is important is because this gives the kids another opportunity to basically like get away from a lot of different things that they, you know, these kids go through a lot. Like I had kids over the summer, lost parents, kids that go home probably didn't eat in the night. This band is like an outlet for them to like basically get away from all of that. And before I left, the proud band teacher wanted to show me the talent and dedication these kids have. They be nice. After a little discipline. They be going Looking crazy on the drums and stuff and the, and the trumpets. I'm getting a little aggravated. I'm gonna have to just start putting y'all out of the band. Say, bro, you come to school to learn. All this other side stuff, some of y'all just too many follow. If you want to follow something, why you don't follow the good things in life? Like seriously, y'all won't follow everything negative. Nothing positive, but everything negative. Because it's starting to y'all starting to put other kids in danger and stuff. You don't care about the next man. You're selfish. Get your mind right. Too many y'all in the hallway. For what? You come to school to learn, man. A dog, you have to start taking this education stuff serious. Open it up. Bang horns up. Despite the traumatic backgrounds and unstable homes a lot of these kids probably have, a good school system and a teacher that actually cares might be enough to break the cycle. That was awesome. You're laying down the law in there too. It's very, very important that somebody stay on them because Nobody else may not be on them. So we're making better people yeah. for the society, for the next generation. Subscribe to Tyler. Hell yeah. Slow this man up, run his numbers up on the street. Man. I want to see this man with 100K subscribers by the end of the day. Noon or leans with a Z. Also, whoever has the most viewed TikTok or YouTube short using a clip from this video, I I'll send you up after this. dollars Post however many times you want, but you must tag my TikTok slash YouTube. Bro, that was crazy. I mean, oh my... Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Is it because it's dirty down there? Let's like, if we cleaned up, we all stop acting like this or it's gonna get back dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, bro. It's just, it's sad, bro, honestly. Cause it's like, you know what I'm saying? That white dude was out of pocket, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He didn't say none, none of his points right, but what he's saying well, it kinda made sense. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear about like, white people killing each other you only hear about black people killing each other why are we killing each other they want to say blm 
Black Lives Matter, like, bro, that, like, it's contradictory. It's like, it don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? But that white dude was out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? Mind your business. Going somewhere, talking about, oh, I know what I would do to get rid of him. What? Come say to my face. Come here. Come here. Come on. I really put my paws in you, bro. Come here. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, he played too much, but nah. When I was down there, man, you can tell, like, like, it's just not a lot of resources down there. Like, I, like, took, like, classes and stuff where it was, like, it like it was like classes about the city, like about New Orleans and stuff, about like their culture and all that. And you could tell, like, bro, it's like they don't really have a lot down there. You know what I mean? Like, like the music is a big thing down there. And like, once that over, like, what's after that? You know what I'm saying? Now you on the streets playing the drums for like pennies and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But that that's a big part of their culture. But I feel like they gotta find like they can do that, but they gotta find something else at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. This that's crazy. Like. I knew it was dangerous. Look look who came out of there. You know what I'm saying? Lil Wayne, NBA Young Boy. These rappers are dangerous. You know what I'm saying? They, I, it's a murder song. Oh, huh? Nah. It's not a murder song. And I know I'm going to talk because I'm from Chicago, but hey, you know what I'm saying? At least it's clean down here. So I don't know, man. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this video, man. How y'all feel about New Orleans? Y'all think it's the murder capital? Well, we know it's the murder capital, but how y'all think we can fix it? Let me know. And y'all know, do if y'all enjoyed the video too much, the comment button, like button, notify button, subscribe button, all about because guess what? <gasps> That's another video from Tyler Oliveira. Don't go back to New Orleans. We're gone.